Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be talking about the third Remdrav Fever ranking dungeon that has just gone live in North America. So, like the previous two iterations of the Remdrav Fever, this is a different style of a ranking dungeon because it is not all about the one run that scores well, it's about your cumulative effort put together which achieves your end result and subsequent rewards. Furthermore, if you are able to achieve a score of 900,009 no, 999,999, you will secure yourself a crown regardless of how much of the player base actually um, achieved that threshold. So with that in mind, you want to try and strive towards that because it's able. this allows you to farm a crown. And that is wonderful along with all the other lucrative benefits and rewards. So in order to give yourself the best score possible, you have to employ certain strategies which may or may not be counterintuitive to what you are used to for Puzzle and Dragons because the matching and scoring criteria differs greatly from our regular ranking dungeons. Furthermore, there will be a part four starting this Friday and I will have a subsequent article released around that time frame to give you a little bit of direction and or insight. So <clears throat> with the Remdra ranking tournaments, your goal is to achieve a high score and to do so you need to actually match 40 of a specific color in order to end the run. When you end the run is when you actually match those 40 orbs. So you also have a leveling mechanic alongside of it. So if you clear X number of orbs, you level up. And every time you level up, each combo is worth significantly more points. So obviously getting a 10 combo board on level one is much worse compared to a 10 combo board at level five or six. You will score more points at higher levels. So you want to delay the premature conclusion of the dungeon by not matching the specific color. So for example, let's say you had the green Remdraw spawn. You want to try and avoid matching wood orbs for as long as possible to get yourself to the next level. And to do so, you can shove orbs to the bottom, you can use orb changers, and that's basically the general idea because once you start hitting the levels four, five, six plus, your score drastically shoots up. So because you can level up by matching X number of orbs, it can be in any formation. You can match a blob of six or a match of two threes. It still counts as six orbs cleared. So at earlier levels, you just want to erase those orbs and you don't really care about the combo count because they're worth so little. But once you achieve higher levels, the combo count becomes significantly more valuable. Furthermore, all active skills will be ready upon entering the dungeon and they do not recharge. So you can use the active skill, but you will never be able to use it the active more than once Per run. So the general strategies are level up as much as possible. So you should pay attention to the amount of orbs required. If you only require three orbs to level up, just match that three. Don't match any more because you want to lower the chances of the specific color from falling down. So to do so, usually match in the top row somewhere horizontally to lower the chances of skyfalls happening. Oftentimes at lower levels, I make one combos or even zero combos to set up my board just to ensure those colors don't match. And at higher levels, your score is definitely greatly increased, so you want to try and avoid matching that specific color. There are no bonus points for doing it, it just ends the run. Obviously, if you fail to match enough orbs when the timer ticks out to zero, it's going to be a problem. Use your heal orbs to restore some um, total time for that level, but every time you level up, you will fully replenish your timer. So if you're about to level up, just hit that level up. Don't worry about matching other stuff because your timer gets refreshed but it does become shorter at higher and higher levels. So it sounds relatively straightforward, but it may be beneficial to watch the video I have uploaded on YouTube for the respective clear. Yes, there are skyfalls involved, but again, I'm averaging about 22 to 25,000 per run. So we are given various orb changers, but only some of them are actually truly useful. So for the red spawn, you want to use Hanzo because he takes red away because you remember you're trying to delay matching that specific color. Against yellow, you use Rass. Against green, you can use um, the Christmas card here or the Dino Rider. Both options will remove wood orbs, but just be aware that Dino Rider actually creates hearts. So in doing so, I often remove the heart orbs and then Dino Rider and then the Christmas card at higher levels when it becomes impossible to match once again. If you do use Hestia, you do, do run a certain degree of risk because she does make a four elemental board of every single color that can possibly spawn. Now, on average, she will make 8.5 of each orb. So if your board is completely flooded with the orb color you're not supposed to match, this can be a possible pseudo solution assuming that she distributes the board in a reasonably even manner. Of course, you can get unlucky where you just have copious amounts of the, desired, the wrongly desired color, but again, it's a risk you may take 
if you are running out of space and you don't have any other orb changers available and you're still at reasonably low level. So because the timer works different compared to other pad dungeons, cascading is actually beneficial. Once you let go of the orb and finish matching, the timer pauses. So every skyfall that falls down or every delayed match from cascading that occurs will not cost you any additional time. So with that in mind, cascading is advantageous because it does help facilitate the chance of having a skyfall actually occur. So if you can cascade, if it's convenient, I would try and prioritize that over brute force matching, again, if at all possible. In addition to all of that, these dun this dungeon has very lucrative rewards. Depending on the color spawn, you will be receiving various drops that range from 100 month or 50 monster points or something terribly small, but it can range to super snow globes or rainbow peas. So it is worth playing over and over again because it is at least a 30 stamina dungeon. And even at the bottom rarity, getting a small snow globe is not bad. It gives a good chunk of rank experience. So for lower ranking players, you can permanently rank up assuming you actually complete the dungeon as well as acquiring very wonderful drops along the way. So in conclusion, the Rem Draw Fever ranking tournaments put a new twist on ranking dungeons. They give you the opportunity to, opportunity to grind for a crown instead of having to pray for that one magical run to score very high. So in theory, if you can score higher on each individual run, you'll hit that cumulative 999,999 points sooner, which can save you mental sanity or time if time is of importance to yourself. So remember, utilize the orb changers when the board gets heavily flooded with the specific color to remove them in order to delay the inevitable end of the dungeon. So let me know what you think about this event in the comments below, as well as what types of strategies you have employed to make your life significantly easier or score better. Hopefully you'll have a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling.